you have to agree with me on this that David would not have had the opportunity to even fight Goliath if he did not have access to be able to talk to Saul. Because who would recognize a small boy that is not even in the army to go and fight for the whole nation? Which means it is kind of like a jeopardy. You are jeopardizing the life of everyone in the kingdom. All the soldiers were running away and this little boy is coming out and say, don't worry. I'm going to kill him and like, boy, what's this? <laughs> what is the meaning of that? Goliath was Saul's problem. And David was able to solve Saul's problem and that became David's destiny that created the pathway for him to go up there and be recognized and be known. Sometimes in our lives, it might even be that what would take us to where God has prepared for us to go may not be a problem that is, you know, genuinely ours at first. It might be someone's problem. Hi, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwem. In today's video, I want to talk about David and Goliath. The lesson that I've learned from David's strategy and the wisdom of God in the life of David. I've never heard this part that I want to share, shared before, but I've seen three things here. How David used the access he had to power. How he used the proximity he had to influence and how God gave him wisdom and strategy and confidence for him to be able to face Goliath. The first thing I want to point out is that Goliath was not David's number one problem. Somehow it is thought as if Goliath was out there to face David. But the reality is that Goliath was not out there to face David. That was why when David ended up being the one to fight him he was so angry and was like what is the meaning of this why are you sending a dog to come fight with me and david from his perspective was i'm not the one fighting you the lord will conquer you and i will kill you this battle is not mine it is the lord's which means there is a sense of purpose in david's own mindset concerning approaching that enemy of israel because david was angry that this guy a pagan is defying the armies of the living God. And then Saul and the army were all running away out of fear. David here, a young boy, what gave him the courage? And what strategy did he use for him to be able to face this Goliath? Now, you have to agree with me on this, that David would not have had the opportunity to even fight Goliath if he did not have access to be able to talk to Saul. David would not have been able to fight Goliath if Saul did not give him a go ahead to fight Goliath, which means his victory would not have been something that would have been recorded because who would recognize a small boy that is not even in the army to go and fight for the whole nation, which means it is kind of like a jeopardy. You are jeopardizing the life of everyone in the kingdom. All the soldiers were running away and this little boy is coming out and say, don't worry, I'm going to kill him and like, boy. What's this? <laughs> what is the meaning of that? In scripture, before David could even go to the fight, David had already had access to Saul. So Saul had known David. And that is the first thing I want to talk about, access. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 22, Then Saul sent word to Jesse, asking, Please let David remain in my service, for I am very pleased with him. David was already before Saul, playing harp for Saul. Saul knew him as a musician, first of all. He asked access to Saul and Saul was already pleased with him. But it wasn't because Saul was pleased with him that he, he gave him the opportunity to face his own enemy. Because Goliath was Saul's problem and David was able to solve Saul's problem and that became David's destiny that created the pathway for him to go up there and be recognized and be known. Sometimes in our lives, it might even be that what would take us to where God has prepared for us to go may not be a problem that is, you know, genuinely ours at first. It might be someone's problem, someone's issue that somehow we get to have empathy or we have the ability through God to solve and then God uses that to create the pathway. It happened in Joseph's life that Joseph was able not to act in difference but to show empathy and in his empathy he was able to address the dreams of the king's baker, pharaoh's baker and chief cup bearer and out of that came the opportunity for him to have access to reach pharaoh. What is this telling you? Don't be indifferent. Your indifference might be the very thing that is blocking you from reaching the path to your destiny. So when David 
was here, David was not indifferent even when he approached that battlefield because he was a young boy. What would have been his concern? Like, why would he even put himself in that situation? Because there would be a lot of fear, like, ah, if I fell here, it's like I've put everybody in jeopardy. What is going to be of my life? But because the presence of God was with him and God gave him courage and he had access, that gave him the opportunity. So do not abuse the access that you have. I heard a story. I was in a vehicle and then the driver was saying something. He received a call and he said that after he dropped the call, he said, this person that called me is working as a cleaner in my parastatal and this very cleaner only calls me whenever he has issues every time he has issues he will call and this particular call that he just called me he called me because he needed help he said he lost someone and is at the park he doesn't have transportation too like he was sharing this not with a happy tone but with a bitter tone imagine for your life someone is only checking on you only when they need something from you someone is only coming to you only when they need something from you and that is where most people make mistakes especially with someone in place of influence that can help them they want to take advantage of the fact that they have access so you have to know this do not abuse that access and that is the wisdom of god that helped david which is what i call david's strategy he did not abuse the access he had saul was pleased with him but he didn't abuse that access number two david served saul first samuel 16 21 so david went to saul and began serving him saul loved david very much and david became his armor bearer reality is it is through saving others saving people that somehow god will lead us to the path of our purpose and destiny fulfillment you might think that it's about just you know doing things on your own and doing things for yourself but sometimes the path to your destiny and purpose is found in saving someone else and i always do think about this because even in the animal kingdom and in the plant's kingdom you realize that one plant exists for the use of another the animal dung is used as manure for the plants and some of the plants are used as food for some of the animals so you see that there is this i'm living for the good of this person and when it comes to us as humans it is that service i'm here to be of help to you you are there because i can need your help or i may need your help so it is like we are here to serve one another we are not here to grab and grab but to serve and it is true service that we get to appropriate the purpose of god in our lives if you are enjoying this video i want you to hit the like button and share this video to someone who might need to see it and if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do so that is your way of supporting the work that i'm doing here when david went to the battlefield his elder brother whom when they were to be anointed in his family samuel looked at him and be like this is the lord's chosen and god told samuel no you are looking at the man's stature and his face i look at the heart and god rejected him already i believe eliab must have already had some already dirty thought about david like angry thought about david so when david was here asking about how to even put himself in position to be able to face goliath eliab went to him and said what are you doing here but when david's oldest brother eliab heard david talking to the men he was angry what are you doing around here anyway he demanded what about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of i know about your pride and deceit just look at that how did you know you just want to see the battle what have i done now david replied i was only asking a question david avoided that distraction and he went ahead to keep on asking the question he was asking to strategize how to meet Saul to be given the privilege to face Goliath because sometimes when the story is shared it's shared as if David just went ahead and met Goliath and started boxing him and, and, and went run to the battlefield no he needed permission to go out there it wasn't his battle it was Saul's problem but David was able to be of help to Saul and this is one thing I do say that when you have anything to do with people of influence your proximity to influence should not be trying to get something from that person in an influential position. It should be, what can you bring of value to them? How can you be of help to them? Because David was of help to Saul, Saul was able to value David, to prioritize him. Imagine that David was one of these boys that every time he needs something, he would be like, oh, we did not eat today in our house. We were suffering. And then Saul would be like, oh, so sorry. Okay, meet one of the servants. They will give you guys food to take to your dad. That was not David. He did not abuse the access. He did not abuse the proximity. How are you treating the proximity to influential people in your life? How are you treating or handling or navigating the proximity you have to people that God has blessed in your life? 
Are you trying to use that as an opportunity to ask and ask and try to get from them? You have to know this, that everybody in their life is trying to do that same thing. They are trying to get from them. So whenever they hear you with the line, oh, sorry, sir, please, they already know what's coming. But if you are putting yourself in a position that if they have a problem, you can solve their problem, that is where you can be in their value book. That is just one of the things that you need to note about how you approach your life because somehow God will take you to the corridor of influence and make you meet people. But how would you treat and handle the proximity you have towards them? Now, this is David's strategy. David did not go about that because he knew Saul and he had access and he had proximity and said, take me to the king. Let me go meet the king so that I can fight this guy. He didn't do that. This was his strategy. David asked questions. This is one thing you have to learn. Ask questions. Valid questions. Questions that will make you know. Which could be in your personal life. Do research about whatever thing you want to put your hands into. Like do your due diligence. Do research and know what would come out of this. Because it might not be that yours has to be like you need to meet a king or someone. But you need to do your research. You need to hone your skill. You need to be good at whatever God has placed in your hands. Here, David needed to ask questions to know exactly what is the reward that will be given to the person that will fight this guy. And this is what I saw from there, the power of negotiation. David was able to ask reasonable questions. If I solve this problem, what's the reward that I would get? In another hand, because David had proximity with Saul, he would have wanted to do this false humility and say, let me go and fight this battle and just say, let me meet Saul so that I will fight this battle and then just to gain Saul's approval. After you win, what will be your reward? I will gain Saul's approval. My master will be proud of me. And you have to be wise in this generation to know that sometimes people know how to use people. They will milk your gift. They will milk your value just for their own good. And after using you, they will push you away. That is why you need to learn the act of negotiation by asking the right questions. That's a strategy. I'm learning this from David in his way towards meeting Saul to fight Goliath. And this is valuable to me because I need this for myself personally. And I believe it will be valuable to you also. You might have gift and sometimes because your heart is so open and kind, you might just want to give this gift out, you know, and help people, help them. But then it may not serve you in the long run because people can finish using you and keep you on side. And you'll be angry. Oh, they used me and then they threw me away. And when the money came, other people were the ones that were being used because you do not know the power of asking the right questions and negotiating. So you gave it for free and they took it. They will not tell you, oh, why are you giving this out for free? If David opted to go and fight Goliath for nothing, he would have done that and then gain nothing at the end of the day. But then... He knew the strategy of negotiation. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26, David asked the soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? There are two things I see here. First of all, he asked a question. Secondly, he put himself in a situation of confidence that he can kill this person. Because his question is, what will be given to the person that will kill this guy? And after that, he made a bold statement. Who is this person anyways? All the soldiers were afraid. Wow, the bonus, the confidence for him to even do this. He asked his way up and this thing was reported to Saul. Then David's question was reported to King Saul and the king sent for him. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I will go fight him. You have to mark another thing here. David did not ask to meet Saul. He asked the right questions, put himself in a position that he can go into this fight. Till Saul called for him. Wow, who is this young guy? The, 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 the military men, the soldiers may have been saying, there's a young man here that is just asking questions to know what will be given to the man that will kill this Philistine. And he's also saying that he can kill this Philistine. That who is this guy? And Saul heard about it. Saul asked for him. And when he went there, he did not even steal bank on the assets and proximity he had with Saul. He had to pitch what he can do. Because even when he told Saul, don't worry, I'm going to fight this. That is confidence for me. Another thing, confidence. As you are approaching your destiny, you need to know the power of asking the right questions, the power of negotiation, honing your gift and knowing who you are and valuing your gift. And apart from that, confidence. You need to learn these things. These are the strategies I've seen. I've not heard it said before from David's story. 
and Goliath. But this is what I've learned in studying and going through this scripture. And you need to note this, even in the life of Joseph, Joseph did not ask to meet Pharaoh. His news went abroad to reach Pharaoh and Pharaoh asked to meet Joseph. So most times, people of influence need to ask for you, which means you have earned your gift and you are excellent at what you do, which is not even your own doing the grace of god and the favor of god is what helps you but your part to play there is not to be indifferent because in all these things these guys were not indifferent joseph was not indifferent he was able to empathize even though he had his own issue he empathized with the king's cup bearer and the baker interpreted their dreams through that guy that guy was able to give the message to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was now in position to call for Joseph. Same thing with David. David asked questions. He had proximity with Saul. He didn't want to abuse that and just say, take me to the king. I know him. Let me go talk to him. No, he went about this like he didn't know the king until Saul asked for him. And because he had proximity now, Saul, because he knew him, he loved him. He could listen to him and say, okay, okay, okay. David, it's you. So what's the problem? And when he said you can go fight the Philistine, Saul said, I don't think you can do this. This guy, is a, this guy has been a soldier since his youth. And David said, I have a history. I've killed a lion, I've killed a bear. This is the list of what God can do for us. And he went ahead and was able to have the opportunity to kill Goliath. David would never have had that opportunity. How did he get that opportunity? There was a divine strategy that he had from God through God's divine wisdom. And this is what I'm asking for my life and I'm asking for you that God would give you divine wisdom and divine aptitude and a strategy for your life so that you'll be able to know exactly what to do, exactly the right questions to ask, the right negotiation to make and the confidence and honing your skill, knowing your value and valuing yourself so that you can reach your destiny. You can kill the giant in your life. This could be access to the right resources, access to the right information so that you can be able to live out all the purpose of God in your life. And I pray that God will bring you to this. So this is my last word. Indifference could be the real enemy to your destiny. Lack of empathy and lack of compassion could also be that. So what are you to do? You are to be in a place that you are not indifferent. If there is a problem that you see, other people may not see that same problem. But because you see it and it irritates you and you have the ability, God-given ability to solve it, then go ahead and solve it. You might say, this is not my problem. It's the boss's problem. Then go ahead and pitch your negotiation. If you can do it, negotiate and see how to solve that problem. And then I pray that God will use this video to inspire you. Let me know in the comment section what you think about today's video. And I would love to see you in the next video. Destiny help us.